Four. And I'm going to call up Amanda Wellesley to give us a bit of a, a pricey of questions one and two. So Amanda Wellesley. Thanks everyone and thank you everyone who, um, who joined the conversation in the green room. Um, so we had the questions of uh, what do you think are uh, the roadblocks stopping building surveyors and the VBA from collaborating. So these themes uh, around this have already been discussed a fair bit today but uh, some of the things we talked about was um, providing better clarity of the roles between building surveyors and um, the VBA. Uh, I suppose uh, delivering a body of evidence around common questions, technical issues, interpretations of legislation, having something that um, building practitioners can reference on a daily basis when they're having to make those decisions um, and not be held back by having to make numerous uh, technical inquiries with the VBA. Uh, we also talked about a lack of trust um, between the two um, the two cohorts effectively. So um, that, one, um, that one resonates, I think, with everybody and it's something that we're all going to have to work on. Um, trust is a two-way street. So um, increased um, education um, approach. So um, taking a more educational approach to how we um, interact with, uh, with industry and with building surveyors. Um, so it's that whole carrot versus stick um, approach. So a better forum uh, for, uh, for communication um, and, and really connecting up all areas. So all the private um, practitioners, the local councils um, and VBA um, technical staff, how can we can keep, keep this conversation going uh, over the next couple of, um, uh, well, forever, really. <laughs> um, so, uh, so the VBA needs better data. We need better data to make better decisions and we also need to share our data with industry um, and other associations, um, our industry associations, so that uh, you know, the, the builders and the fire safety engineers and all those other practitioners um, that we regulate can have the benefit of what we're seeing um, and hopefully take the pressure uh, off building surveyors in their decision making um, and their regulatory activities. Um, and generally addressing the competencies of other practitioners. Uh, so the VBA addressing those competencies, again, to take the pressure off uh, the, the, um, building the, the building surveyors at the, at the forefront. So our second question was, what can the VBA do for building surveyors that will help them in making buildings safe for Victorians? A very, uh, a very important question. So some of the things that we discussed there was a faster prosecution approach uh, and publishing of case law so that um, building surveyors can understand um, how um, some of the enforcement that they're taking is being treated at the other end so that they can be better informed about how to approach that um, as it comes to hand. Um, so taking better action on referred enforcement, something that we've heard a little bit about today already uh, around how we treat those building notices, building orders, um, building orders and directions to fix, um, how we prosecute them, how we engage with the people who have ultimately failed to do and, and act in that space, um, as well as providing better feedback to building surveyors about um, you know, the enforceability or otherwise in the outcomes of those, of those referrals. Um, already said, um, sharing um, information with um, industry associations uh, so that we can spread the word about the trends and what we're seeing and where others need to lift their game. Uh, and um, an interesting uh, concept of um, introducing a peer review process for uh, fire safety engineering to support decision making um, uh, for building surveys in that space. Uh, so that's a little bit about what we discussed. Thank you to those that uh, contributed. Hi everyone, um, I'm Sarah, I'm the manager for stakeholder and community liaison as part of the statewide cladding audit. I think I've met a number of you before, in case I haven't, hi. Um, so our questions were, what do we need to do to encourage new entrants into the building surveying profession? Uh, so the first suggestion was to get rid of liability altogether for surveyors, which I'm sure <laughs> would encourage lots of people to join the profession. Um, the, the next one was uh, a postgraduate course offered for architecture graduates, etc., um, to help fast track their qualification. Um, and previously, this has been provided through RMIT, so maybe that's something that we can look into. Um, and <clears throat> apparently, previously in the 80s, there was a, um, a me mechanism where ministerial approval was a prior, sorry, provided to um, really qualified ex and experienced building inspectors to get them into surveying. Um, now, the next question we had was, what changes should we make to ensure documentation submitted for approval of a building surveyor is adequate? Um, so, what have we got here? Um, well, we felt like making uh, the NCC easily available for drafts people would be a really good start. Um, 
The registration restrictions should be aligned with the BCA volumes for architects. Um, a lot of discussion around CPD points, um, making this accessible, affordable um, for architects and draftspeople. Uh, building designers providing checklists um, to surveyors, uh, along with other materials. Um, uh, the VBA to um, improve or increase uh, communications that are coming out of the VBA, um, and like through the VBA mail and things like that. Apparently this is done really well through the plumbing version of VBA mail, um, and that provides, um, uh, I suppose, a way of providing issues and how those are being dealt with within the industry. Um, uh, some overall um, encouragement for uh, architects to, I suppose, even hold um, volumes of the NCC, BCA. Um, yeah, that was it. Thanks. So it sounds like uh, CPD and further training came up a lot. So we had question three, which was what needs to be included in a CPD program? No surprises here. It needs to be mandatory. It needs to be available. It needs to be online. We need to be able to do it after hours. Um, uh, there was a reference to somewhere between 20 to 30 hours. The AIBS is 30 hours a year, and that was felt to be about right. Um, there was a number of references to the, the components of the training need to be measurable. So the work, so that VA, VBA is done with uh, carbon monoxide training could be a, a bit of a model. Uh, it needs to be regular, concise, assessed and coordinated uh, the Tasmanian model was thrown up as a, as a sort of best practice in Australia version um, and uh, it was referenced that because it was 50% funded. So they were the sort of core things around what would go into a good a CPD program. Uh, in relation to question four, which was what more could building surveyors do to ensure buildings are safe for Victorians to use? Um, you know, a, a couple of a couple of statements came came up. Pride in the job was was a reference, um, and it was palpable to everyone in the room that there was a significant pressure to compromise standards because of other trades, because of builders, or because of someone else in the chain, and providing some form of tool or assistance that would help a building surveyor not compromise standards. So we actually coined a little phrase and we stole it from John West. And John West's advertising line was, John West has the best fish because it's the fish that John West rejects. So maybe it's to do with some of the documentation that you're getting in your roles. Maybe you can be like John West and reject some of that documentation. Um, one other thing that did come up, there was some discussion about codes of conduct and that was certainly uh, something that was discussed and they also said we'd like to see codes of conduct for other trades as well, not just building surveyors, so I can understand that as well. Um, and, you know, the ethical, moral and regulatory obligations came up. So it was fairly clear things that are going to help building surveyors to not compromise their decisions. I think it's a fair assessment, would you say, problem?